you probably well know, Autac um, is uh, a company with uh, assets in, in various parts of the world. Um, we started off with Slovakia, um, and more recently we've moved into Africa. And this, this afternoon I'm here to tell you about uh, our investment in Zambia. Um, we announced that in uh, March of this year, and uh, the company, uh, the project in Zambia is, is quite advanced in terms of the fact that it's a mine is being built or a plant is being built at present to produce copper and cobalt. Um, the project itself is called the Calibre Project um, and it has been in production. Um, and when I say in production, what I mean is, is that uh, a local guy had the license, the mineralizations on surface. It's, it's in a sand, what we call a saprolite, it's a leached material. And so all this local guy was doing, he had an excavator, he had a truck, he was picking up the material, taking it down to the river, washing it in the river, upgrading the copper from 1% to 4%, and then transporting that to a local uh, SXEW uh, facility in Solwezi. Um, what the company is doing at the moment, Zamsort, is they're in the process of building a plant. They should have started the civil works this week. And uh, they will be producing, in effect, a copper cement and a cobalt hydroxide cake. So not metal, but a concentrated form of copper and cobalt. In addition to the deposit that's being mined at the moment, they've also got a, a much larger prospecting license, which in its own right is, is a world-class license area. And I'll get into the details of that shortly. So to give you a, a, a little where, where, where the project is located, it's, it's in northwest Zambia. Um, it's in a region that's called the Domes region. Um, the closest settlement is Mwinilunga, which is about 70 kilometers away. It's about 900 kilometers from Lusaka. So um, on the way there, I drove, I left at Hopper 6 in the morning and I arrived in the camp at Hopper 11 at night. Um, on the way back, I left at Hoppers 5 in the morning and I got into Lusaka at 5 o'clock at night. So depending how you catch the traffic, it's, it's a 12-hour drive. Um, it's got, it's in, the, in the right address, it's in the Copper Belt. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll come back to this diagram now, I'll just give you a quick rundown on the projects that have recently been developed in the Domes region. In the last 10 years, uh, you've had three big mines come into production in the Domes region. You've had Kanshanshi, which is first Quantum's mine going into production in 2005. You've had Lemwana, which is Barrick's mine uh, in 2009. And last year you had first Quantum, um, they invested $2 billion to get their Sentinel project going, or the Sentinel mine, which is part of what the overall Trident project uh, 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 is. So to come back to that, Kanshanshi, Lemwana, Kalambila. Uh, and the Sentinel mine or Kalambila is only 40 kilometers away from Calibre. And this is the license area in question, uh, the, the Calibre license area. And the mine is just to the south over here, which is called Calibre. Um, a little history on, uh, on, on this license area. Uh, the prospect itself was discovered in 1928. It was called McKenna's Prospect. The Rhone Selection trusted a bit of work in the late 50s. Uh, they did some diamond drilling. Um, Ag Agap explored uh, that part of the copper belt for uranium in the 70s and a serious look uh, or serious effort was done by Anglo and Equinox back in the late 90s uh, and at that time it was in the form of a, of a joint venture called the Samanglo joint venture and this was called the Kabombo project. What happened in, in, in early 2000, Anglo-American pulled out of Zambia, um, Equinox still had the license but they didn't do anything on the license. And so in 2006, when this local Zambian national applied for initially a small mining license over the Calibre uh, art crop, uh, Equinox went happy. But when he applied for a larger prospecting license to cover 1,000 square kilometers, Equinox got really unhappy. And they, took, uh, they challenged the grant of the application uh, of this license to, uh, to Zamsort to court. And this was only resolved last year in August. So for eight years, and in the process, you've got to remember, Ang, uh, Equinox got taken out by Barrick for $7 billion. So in the end, it was a court case in effect against Barrick, which little, this little Zambian company was able to, to succeed. Um, and to bring you back to, you know, 
Equinox got taken out, as I said, by Barrick for seven billion. But Kiwara, uh, who the former CEO or chairman was Colin Bird, who's presenting as well today here, was taken out for two hundred and sixty million dollars by First Quantum, and that was only after having drilled a few holes on this Columbia prospect. Now, the the significance of that is that. When Anglo and Equinox were exploring the Kabombo projects, in other words, the, the, that region, they ranked the targets 1 to 30, the exploration targets. And the list that you see there, 1 to 30, uh, Calibo was number one. And the reason is the mineralizations on surface. It was a copper clearing. You could see it. But out of the 30 targets, nine of them are actually in this 1,000 square kilometer license area that ZAMS would hold. But more interestingly, the top seven of those targets are in Zamsort's license area. So the most prospective ground is in Zamsort's license area. And interestingly, number 22, which is Columbia, which what Kiwara sold to was sold to First Quantum for $260 million, was only number 22 on that target ranking list. So from a prospectivity point of view, um, this ground is extremely prospective and you know there's a reason why um, it took 10 years to fight for. Um, I won't go too much into the geology but all I'll say is that there's oxide mineralization on surface and there's also sulfide mineralization. Now the oxide mineralization will end up being a, a smaller resource but the billion ton resource will end up being a, a sulfide resource and uh, in terms of the exploration with a geochem program has, has commenced on the license area. But so as I, as I touched on earlier, um, there was exploration, there was mining activity taking place. Um, that's their excavator. Um, they've actually got some material that's stockpiled there, so they've screened that material. So they've upgraded it from one, one and a half percent to three and a half percent purely by screening the material. Um, and that stockpile, those stockpiles that you see in the, in the picture there, the bottom right hand corner, that totals about 30,000 tons of material grading at 3.5% copper and about, it's about 0.3.4% cobalt. So just alone in those stockpiles, there's $5 million just in copper value at today's prices. As I mentioned earlier, there are no resources on this license area, or should I say there are no code compliant resources. So the Rhone Selection Trust drilled a few holes, Anglo and Equinox did a bit of scout drilling, Zamsort themselves did a bit of drilling, but there hasn't been a systematic resource definition program, um, which to some extent is, has been a hindrance for Zamsort, but at the other hand, there, therein lies the opportunity. So what's the approach that, that Zamsort have taken? Um, the capital markets, as we all know, are quite difficult. And you know, they've realized that they can't go out there and raise $5 million to go do drilling and feasibility studies and so forth. And so they've gone ahead and said, well, we've been mining this material for the last 10 years. The local uh, off-takers have been taking this material and they haven't been complaining. So we know what the grade of the material is that we've been mining. We know that there's some random drilling in the area that tells us that the mineralization carries on for at least another 100 to 200 meters from where we're presently mining. Um, and we know what the metallurgical characteristics of the ore are because the off-takers have been taking it and they're using SXCW, solvent extraction, to extract the, the mineralization. So they've said, well, let's just go ahead and build a plant. And it's a totally unorthodox approach because in the normal approach would be you do your studies, you do your definition drilling, you prove up your resources, uh, and, and, and then you move off forward from there. But they've said, no, we'll just go ahead and do it. And, bit of argument and I got them to do a bit more test work just to confirm the metallurgical assumptions um, and they went and they bought uh, uh, an old plant um, in Zambia for scrap metal value uh, and so now that, that piece of that plant is now being shipped on to site so the top right hand corner was from when I was there two weeks ago um, so they got filter presses and they got pumps and they got tanks up there now and the other parts of the plant uh, that they weren't able to locate locally in Zambia, they've gone to South Africa and bought that. So, and total capex for this plant is $600,000. So for $600,000, they're actually gonna put up a plant that's in theory gonna be producing 300 tons of copper a month and 50 tons of cobalt a month. So they've proven me wrong. 
because I said, you won't be able to do it for less than $3 million. And they said, that's our feasibility study. And on that basis, uh, not only will that feasibility study actually earn us some money, but we can use the data from that then to expand an, an, an the plant. So that there, this week, they should have, uh, uh, as you can see in the top picture there, there, there there's no concrete on the floor, uh, but they have started throwing concrete this week, the Civil Works, and they expect to be in production by the middle of next year. Um, so their plan at the moment is to mine about 30,000 tons of material a day, a month, which is about 1,000 tons of material a day. The grades that you see they're quoted are based on their historical mining record. So they've mined about 70,000 tons over the last 10 years, so very small scale. And the, the grades that we're using are the grades from the, what they've been mining. And, and they've only gone down 5 to 10 meters. So that's what they expect to be mining over the next uh, three to four years. The costs, uh, the costs that you see there are based on, on, on the numbers that have been provided and, and the models that we've run. Um, okay, the copper price and the cobalt price has slightly slipped off um, from, this, the, from where they are today, but it, it should still, in theory, make money even at current prices. And what they'll be producing is a copper cement. So in the normal heat leach process, for example, like Central Asia Metals are operating in, in Kazakhstan, a normal leaching of copper. They're using acid to get the copper into solution. But what they're doing afterwards is they're not going all the way to, to cathode because that is quite a substantial capital investment. All they're doing is they're producing what we call a copper cement. And they're actually adding an iron powder to the pregnant solution that's got the copper in it. And that iron powder precipitates the copper out of solution and the iron goes into solution replacing the copper. And that iron powder will be about 85% concentration in terms of purity. And then with the cobalt, it's a similar process. It's what they call a hydroxide cake. And that uh, they take that uh, uh, pregnant solution, which has uh, got a pH of about 3, so quite acidic, because they've used acid to dissolve the metals into solution. And they sequentially increase the pH by adding soda ash. And when you get to about a pH of 9, the cobalt and nickel will then come out of solution in the form and uh, 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 basically forms a sludge. And then that there you filter off and you produce your copper hydroxide cake. So uh, as we speak this week, um, they had metal traders out there. Um, so the metal traders are looking to uh, pre-finance the, uh, pre the, um, the working capital, which looks like it's about two to three million dollars for the, the first three months. Um, it's unbelievable that the cost of the reagents is more than what the cost of the plant was, uh, or is, I should say. Um, but this has been purely done, um, you know, the Zambian way, the local way. It, it, it's not something that, as I said, you know, I, I, you know, when we looked at it, we said, you know, two to three million dollars to do something like that, and they've done it for six hundred thousand um, dollars. A little bit about the, you know, the the rest of the license area. As I said, uh, it, it, it's a thousand square kilometers. So where they're mining is a four square kilometer mining license, and that is, in, is surrounded by a thousand square kilometers of really per perspective uh, ground in, in, in the copper belt. And this is actually core, these diagrams that you see are core from the late 50s drill program that was carried out by the Rhone Selection Trust. And that core is actually in Kalalushi, in the core warehouse there. And when we went there, this was in April, um, it was clear that someone else had been looking at the core as well. And when we asked the lady, you know, who's been, you know, having a good look at this core, um, you know, First Quantum had been in there taking samples of the core. Rio had been in there taking samples of the core. So, the, you know, as I said, this ground is perspective ground and the majors know it. Um, the major, you know, some of the majors have even come to, um, to Zamsort and offered to join venture with them. But Zamsort's uh, model is they don't want to be a producer. They wanted to add the value and then get taken out. And you know, they, you know, they said, look, if an advanced asset can go for seven billion and an asset with a couple of drill holes can go for 260 million, if we can go for something in between that, then that'll be great. But obviously, times have changed, markets have changed, but in two, three years time, if the cycle comes back, who knows? Um, and you know, that, and that's, that's the game plan on that front. Um, so in summary, um, you know, it's obviously to commercialize the existing production that's there, uh, clean it up, make it more professional. Um, 
and at the same time, you know, we are overseeing uh, the technical aspects to that program, and we hope to, over the next year or so, increase our position in the local company. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. Really. I don't know if you have any, any questions. I know we're a bit tight on time, um, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you. Okay? Yeah, perfect. Thank you.